Oh, oh, oh crap. My God. You selfish son of a ball sack. I am the son of a ball sack. Yep. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reactions of Corbin. Aren't we all? No. And you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks to Patreon for the account. Subscribe if you have a like button because it helps out the algorithm we so all want to fondle. Uh, today, we have a uh, another one of those uh, tape casts. They interview off of the tape. Oh, yeah, cool. Ranveer Singh and Karan Johar. Oh, and but this is from a, about four years ago. I would so imagine it's not current. Yeah. Um, so this is Gully Boy days. Gully Boys. Um, but uh, very Gully Boy. We we always love these tape guests. They're, we think they're really fun and interesting, and we love listening oh, to yeah. these two talk as well. Especially. Yep. This uh, is good. This should be a lot of fun. Here we go. And a lot of energy. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be in conversation. That's that's a grand uh, entry so, music love for you. Me. Since it's the first time a tape cast will have nightwear and loungewear in conversation. Would you love know? it like I always do? Okay, so if you begin, I have to press play. I just want to say that I'm really happy I'm doing this with you. Well, I would have only done this. Oh, oh. I, there was no option. There was no choice. That's why I didn't do the first season. You actually, without a doubt, are the greatest conversationalist. Is it conversationalist? Conversationalist. Yes. yes. You're the greatest conversationalist Achha. that I have ever known. You think he asked so what color the set would be? On that note. We're meant to have an intense chat about our lives, career choices, preferences, failures, successes, everything. Praise is not one of the things that we're meant to, meant to get into. Really? All right. Yes. Criticism? Totally. Oh, uh, always. It's always the downside that is oh, more exciting than the other. Such a shithead, Karan. <laughs> <laughs> Look what you're wearing. Uh, this conversation just got interesting. It just got hot. Okay. Karan Johar and Ranveer Singh, welcome to Take Cast. You're both uniquely flamboyant artists. We are very excited to hear you speak about your art and immensely successful life. It's such a good concept. You don't have an interviewer getting in the way of yeah. conversation. Sorry, will you begin? So we're gonna do all of our interviews. I'm just all gonna right, take. Let's it. ask you about stardom. You don't get to hear those yeah. sounds that often anymore. Yeah, I forgot how to do this. Yeah, uh, upside yes, down. Sorry. Turn it the other way. <laughs> <laughs> You're much older than Ranveer, too. Ranveer, as your fame increases, how are you ensuring that stardom doesn't get in the way of craft? That when people see you on screen, they believe that you're the character and not the star they see on hoardings and magazine covers. I mean, that's loaded. Uh, so, I mean, can I add to that before you Please. answer it? So, the thing with stardom is that um, <coughs> Indian cinema it has always been about stardom. It's about positioning actors, you know, in a certain way that projects them as movie stars. And each, I think, leading actor, I talk about actors because that's been a certain perception, the way they're introduced on film, the way they stand tall, the way they kind of handle a confrontation scene, the way they are romantic, the way they look into the eyes of a woman. All that is an image-based thing. Now, the new order, you know, which you strongly represent has come in, uh, with of course a new flavor and a new syntax but there's also at the back of everyone's head because they've grown up on this film fodder there is always a sense that these are the defining aspects of stardom and how do I contemporize that also maintain the edge which which performances of today and films of today demand but also create that stardom for myself has that been a dilemma for you Ranveer or it's happened organically um, I do think we're living in a time that's very rapidly evolving. Mm. Um, the meaning of the star actor is changing. Mm. Uh, to me, stardom is a byproduct. Mm. I love it. Um, it's it, only good things come from it uh, for me, um, professionally, personally also. Uh, but I've always regarded myself as an actor. And I think I read a quote um, by you, 
uh, on a significant platform actually, and it was the headline. It said it's the age of the actor star or yeah. star actor. Mm -hmm. So I think we're living in a time where that meaning has changed. Um, people um, will give uh, acclaim, love, respect, admiration to, I think, uh, a person who's able to play various characters. If they recognize an ability in an actor to be honest to various different characters, um, I think that is what the new and evolved uh, audience recognizes and appreciates. This was also, before do you COVID. Think the age of the superstar is kind of <coughs> there now. It is because, because it's fragmenting. No? Because also because the mystery and mystique no longer yeah, exists. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah, social media, the paparazzi interviews such as these, yeah. uh, everything has actually taken away the aura. You know, what is left is the talent. So yeah, that's why so I said like, it in an interview that it's the age of the actor, not necessarily the age of the star anymore. And that's significant, right? Yeah. Um, because yes, you are absolutely right. The new, um, you know, the advancements in technology, social media, fragmentation of everything, you know, um, it's, there is, you're right, there is no mistake. I don't think um, the new and evolved audience wants to really uh, look up to anybody. Like for heaven's sake, I even know the underwear you wear. I have rhythms. Literally, they know what you wear, what you sleep in, where you go to eat, who you meet on a regular basis. On a daily basis. I mean, you know, it's just there's no and, mystery left. Yeah, and it's also up to you how much you want to let them in. You could exactly. do a story every morning and they could like, they could be in bed with you. Yeah. You right. Know, there is no, there is no end to it. Right. So I think for me personally, um, the stardom came as a byproduct. I always wanted to just be an actor. Yeah, yeah. And you are. And I don't think I would, <clears throat> I don't think I'd be able to digest my own acting if I was doing the same, pulling the same tricks with every character. But you haven't, because I mean, you play diametrically different characters. Yeah. And in fact, there's no way you can slot Ranveer Singh. If I think of Ranveer right. Singh as a brand today, I'm like um, evil, passionate lover, Flip, flippant, frivolous, young kind of lover, <laughs> uh, down to now uh, the new rapster in town. I mean, like literally, like there is no kind of film or role that you haven't already experimented with. Some with tremendous success, there has been some failure, but we will talk about that later. But I just think that the versatility defines your presence in cinema and not necessarily the stardom. So I want to keep uh, transforming myself and not get stuck to create that one iconic image. I think um, if I want one thing to be definitive of me is that I'm a versatile actor. And uh, I think in the new age, um, like you very rightly said, that is what will get you recognition. There used to be a time when I grew up and my father wanted me to be an actor. And he told me horse riding is clear, ah. you know, and, and Mujhe bhi bola gaya tha. much to my mother's despair and shattering like you know, she nearly you know her face fell <laughs> because she was imagining me on a horse but anyway there was like periods you have to dance you have to fight you have to look a certain way hero lagna chahiye body banani chahiye i'm like none of that really matters can you act <laughs> i mean it's that simple can you really act right. that's the first question i ask a young aspirant mm. who comes into my room boy girl whoever and i'm like can you act you know, it's okay if you look gorgeous. It's okay if you have the best physique. It's okay if you have beautiful genetics. Can you act? Because there's act an actor. And that's one thing that people have forgotten for two decades. You know, and suddenly the big reminder is back. If you can't act, you don't belong. And if you don't belong, you must find something else to do. So that's why I think this is the age where the actor is appreciated. When I saw Ranveer Singh a decade ago, I was like, he doesn't look like a movie star at all. He should not be in the movies. When I saw his performance, I was like, this boy is a movie star. He can act. It's the age of the actor. It's the death of the superstar, I believe. And it's the age of cinema. Finally. Tell that to Shah Rukh Khan and Patham. Content, <laughs> it's about to cross a thousand crores or something like that. Okay. You'll always have stars. What do we have to do? You have to put something in and ask me. Such fantastic subjects. Slam! <laughs> you ask oh for it. God. Do not play. It's worth it. It's going to come my way. Right up. Hi, Karan. This is Mom here. <sighs> How are you doing? You are I just you? wanted to ask you a couple of questions, Vijaya. Hi, Mom. What are the lessons or values that you learned from your father and me that you think you would like to teach Yash and Julie? And secondly, what part of being a single father do you find tough? Mm. 
Uh, oh God, firstly, I want to give my mother an award for being the biggest performer on the face of this earth because I was on my way and she said, oh, you're doing what interviews this? It's something. <laughs> it's likely that she doesn't remember. Also. That is a do not play. Mom is the do not play. You must know that. Moms are do not play. <laughs> do not mess with mom is what that means. Really. Um, the first question is, what did I learn? You know, so for my parents, two things I learned from my dad, one for my dad and one for my mom, I have to say. My mom always said, when you're on the right, just say it, mm. you know. Just say it. If you're in the right, don't fight shy of putting it out there. You know, if you feel right about something, go out and say that, listen, if I feel I you've wronged me and I think I'm in the right, this is what thing. Confront if you feel you're in the right and you truly believe it. You're not just defending yourself. And if you're in the wrong, apologize. That's the two things she always taught me. She's saying, saying sorry is not something that weakens you. It strengthens you. Mm. You know, apologizing for your weaknesses or your misjudgments or your misconduct is something that you must always do. And I've done. Whenever I've done something that I feel like I was out of line or I kind of stumbled or I, you know, kind of failed or I wasn't up to expectation, I've apologized. Be it a film, an incident, a situation or a comment. Uh, that training she always gave me and it's got stuck in my head. And when I've been in the right, I've gone up to people one-on-one. -on -one. That I won't do in the media space. Mm -hmm. But one-on-one -on -one said, look, what you did hurt me, it upset me. I think I was right in this situation and I just needed to put it so out there. So you do confront, huh? Yes, I confront when I believe I'm in the right. You're not averse to conflict. No, I, I used to be, but in the last decade, things have changed. The last decade only? Yeah. What changed you? Uh, abandon. Comes with age. Uh, it really does. Age gives you abandon. You know, uh, initially you're a pleaser, then you become a neutral person, and then you become a fighter. Okay. So I'm in that latter. What do you think I am? You're in, in the neutral phase, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you're neutral, but a borderline abandon also. So I mean, like you have both. You will eventually get. You will get your act together in a few years. And you will feel you will fight for yourself. Right now, you don't really. You're too detached from that zone. So you'll get there. Um, I've seen it happen. Unfortunately, I'm many years senior to you, decades actually. So I've seen. You don't look it. Uh, <laughs> but secondly, what my dad told me is like films flop, films are hit. Goodwill is everything. Mm. So being good to your crew, your cast, your crew, your technical team, making sure they're comfortable, making sure they're taken care of, making sure that they are rested and just relaxed through the process of a film is more important. He said an unhappy crew is a flop film for me. Really? He always said that. He's saying what happens at the box office is immaterial. If your crew is unhappy and they don't like the way you've treated them, that film is a failure. Mm. He's saying for me, the money made from that film means nothing. That's something that's ingrained into the, into the syntax of dharma. It's like something that we are like the way we want <clears throat> to be with our cast and crew and just people Good. on set. These are the two learnings I think that I uh, very strongly stand by. About the kids, being a single parent is really very scary and daunting because I think it takes a mother and a father bet, to complete yeah. the upbringing of a child. And in many ways, you could say that having Yash and Ruhi is full of love, but it's also a selfish decision. It's because I want that love for myself. Mm. I felt there was a large empty space in my life that needed to be filled by children. So oddly, it happened naturally. They call me Dada and they call my mother Mama. They don't call her Dadi, they call her Mama. Because I feel like we are co-parenting them. So mm. I'm trying very hard that both of us fulfill the roles of a mother and a father completely. And uh, it's daunting because post my mother and that thought scares me every single day. Mm. I'm like, I just hope I have all the love in my heart to give them and to not make them feel incomplete in any other way and not make them feel like they're missing out on a certain part of the parental process. All I can do is love with all my heart. And all I can do is also make sure they do the right thing. Because I've grown up very strongly with a very strong sense of right and wrong by my parents. And I want to inculcate that in Yashan Ruri myself. I don't think I'm going to miss anything. You've got both masculine and feminine. You've got the best of both worlds. Nurturer, protector, you've got everything. And you're going to be the best dad ever. And you, so will if you. you don't already are. And so will you because your wife is a born mother. Yeah. She's not a born wife be, or a born daughter. Mm. She is a born mother. <laughs> yeah. She is like she was born to be a mother. She's born homemaker, born mother. I mean, Jai oh, Jule Lala. Okay. Bless you. So now I'm going to ask you, what do you have to say about relationships, Rinvi? Let's find out what the voice of God has to ask us. <laughs> relationships. Relationships. You said in an interview that marriage is a commitment. Mm -hmm. Out is not an option. So whatever you have to work through, you do. 
what are the issues that a marriage between two superstars involve that another marriage may not <laughs> and how do you deal with them mm. i mean <laughs> it's all good and gravy right now <laughs> it's uh, i don't know there aren't there aren't any issues where when we're home and we're together uh we're like we're we're super chill and we're like friends and that's the most beautiful part about it um we have a lot of common ground we can talk uh, since we're both in like um movie stars uh we can we have a lot more to talk about perhaps because um we're in the same line of work um but i think what's most significant for me uh, as far as the most significant relationship in my life uh goes uh and that is with my wife um i think we're friends we're besties we're bffs we're buddies should be we can talk endlessly uh we can spend endless amounts of time with each other we can spend time with each other in silence doing our own thing and be totally comfortable and i think um this is a a, a kind of philosophy that maybe for the first time in my life i experienced uh, embedded in a film that you made kuch kuch hota hai mm-hmm. that she's uh, your lover is also you know she That's a large part of that constitution is that they're your best friend yeah. um and that's that's what i love the most uh, because uh, genuinely the guy is my he's my bestie so so that, i, I mean, that's, think that's so evident in your interaction but also i believe uh, in my experience as a complete outsider who's not been in a strong relationship and has not been in a marriage and will not be my experience of actors who like there's a perception that how come actors only date actors but i think there's an understanding of routine like there's an understanding yeah, yeah, yeah. of simple things yeah, like yeah. when you're in a shot <laughs> the other the your spouse yeah. will know what that means yeah. when you're in a reading yeah your spouse will know what that means yeah, 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 you yeah. will know what it means for the picker she will know what it means for you now here are the pitfalls the pitfalls mm-hmm. are that you are in a industry full of very gorgeous glamorous people that you always want and actors are usually strong personalities and threats so that doesn't always work of stepping out of the boundary yep. there is insecurity yep which is again a human phenomena it's yep. going to happen yep. you're going to go through that the maturity of friendship i think what you share with dipika gives you honesty and clarity to kind of override those possible potential circumstances and the time arise, you can spend away from each other or have arisen in your life and your relationship um see i'm a very secure lover because i know the way i love her nobody else can that is quite true mm. and that that is not only evident in your demeanor but it's pretty much <laughs> and um as far as uh, i'm concerned i mean i bags myself the top most chicks so what i got to worry about what she got to worry about i mean i've never met anybody in my life who's uh, who's just who's uh, captivated me um the way she does and i've been dating her 6 years i dated her for 6 years and then then we got married and um that's i've been in show business what 8 9 years and 6 out of those 8 uh, 9 years i've been here yeah. and uh that's testament to the fact that n- no other uh person that i met captivated me or does till date captivate me the way she does mm-hmm. i've never met anybody like her she's she's really something else the other important thing to look out for um uh, and i give you like a red flag for that uh is that in the relationship of two immensely successful actors yeah. there will be a road of success and failure involved and there could be potential ego dynamics that eat into that not the abhiman situation of life but there is like a, <laughs> there is um like there is a give and take you know that needs to be done yeah. it's in those relationships and those times that you really you know there is like you know there is a one there is there see there will come a time where one is stronger than the other yeah, there yes. will always be that zone. someone's it's having success and someone's not you have to constantly go back to what you started with especially as actors i have no ego and she is really mature about this yeah. so, so i think that's good. great if you can override those fears complexes and the the ego tussle that may arise you have a marriage for keeps which i am dead sure you do okay here goes you were recently on the cover of a popular magazine with the headline bollywood's most powerful man that's true and the article said that your off-screen persona assumes an intimidating form do you believe that your bollywood's most powerful man 
and how do you ensure that you use this power responsibly okay i'm not going to sound modest or you know i'm even pretend to be but it's really not something that i think and believe ever crosses my heart my mind and i say this with my hand on my heart i do my job i do it to what i know best i do a lot of things so here's what it is i feel very bad about one thing that i want to correct in my lifetime and that's that i am liked as a filmmaker i'm not loved mm-hmm. am i the most powerful no power to me is an extension of your core career so edel was a personal film mm-hmm. that i made for myself okay. i never made it and i always said if this film does x amount i'm happy because i'm making this for myself and were you happy <clears throat> I was very happy. Yes. It's the only film that makes me completely happy, and I know it had polarized responses. Which one? I was what did you say? Then I, I took I a ba- beat and I said, "Now I need to make a film that wins me love, respect, and money." And that's when I wanted to take a deviation, and I took a while, and I very quietly developed a takt, because to me, this is my first and last ditch. effort at getting the mantle of being a good filmmaker back i don't have that recently on twitter there was a, a poll of who are the best directors and there was raju's name and sanjay's name zoya's and other people's names there and there were two three people said oh you forgot to mention kejo this i hate but kejo and the lady replied no he is not the most uh, he best director he's the most he's the best producer and i'm like when did i become a producer <laughs> I'm here because I love to direct movies, and it really and very rarely things that are said on social media sting you, and it stung me like a bee, like it stung me like a bee, and I'm like, and on the same day I see this men's exhibit that calls me powerful. On the same day, with me pouting like an auntie, and I'm like, I mean, my wardrobe is powerful. I'm not, you know. I mean, I have I have expensive clothes. Is that mean I'm powerful? No, I'm not powerful. No, because you're powerful because, because, because you can make a phone call and change the industry. Kind of a phenomena because I'm. I like this idea. I'm okay, I'll back it. I don't like this idea. Of, change no. careers, of, change you know, lives. Dynamics, I'm part of. The you know what powerful means? Yes. Just because I'm everywhere, you could give me an availability award. <laughs> you can't give me a power award. So I'm not going to accept this, and I will not accept. That's like Tom Cruise saying he's not powerful. I'm proud of. Then bam, I will come on that cover and say, "I don't care what you think. I'm powerful because I made the film I set out to make." Up to that point, I am not taking this, and I'm not saying this with humility because I've never been that person. Nothing about me is humble. <laughs> I mean, you know, I'm more in your face than your own face. You know, so I'm like there for you to see. I'm unapologetically, unabashedly in love with the business of show business. I love strutting down red carpets. I love the paparazzi. I am ready for the airport looks. I, I don't think anybody denies any of that, look, but also look, you're a very so powerful man. I am ready for this business. I am ready for all the drama that surrounds it. I have no problem. I accept it with an open heart. But am I this country's finest filmmaker? Absolutely not. That wasn't the question. Was done, I will that, was that was not the question. That was not the question. That's where okay. he equates the power. By that partly. Yeah. Partly. Tell him. Because, Why? Because Tell him. I believe you I are. I thought I made a good. You pitch. are. You know. You, uh, I'll buy your point that if you're really good at what you do and what you believe right. is your core. Exactly. What his belief of what the power is. Right. But you. I'll buy it. However, <laughs> it doesn't take away from the fact that you are perhaps the most influential figure in Indian show business. Again, I'm not influential. There's. I see the words are heavier than the reality. I'm amiable. I'm accessible and I'm affable. No, I'm not powerful. No, these are the three qualities I have. Which is there's power in these qualities, but that doesn't make you powerful. I'm oh amiable because I'm nice to people. No, I'm no, people. sir. I'm affable because that's my basic demeanor. I'm accessible because I make myself accessible. That drives me mad. All these are true, but other people are not. But I, I, I have a, a challenge for you, sir. In this industry, which I don't have. <laughs> I have no self importance problem. I have no ego. I'm like, काम करना है तो कहीं भी पहुंच जाओ. कुछ भी करना है. You want to go down on your bended knees if an actor is giving you an issue or a technician is giving you an issue. I have no problem. Those issues are not mine. I don't take myself seriously. I was told once by a person who told me that काम है नहीं. You know, ना तुम्हारे ऑफिस ना मेरा ऑफिस हम मैरिट में मिलेंगे. I said नहीं सर. मेरा काम है मैं आ जाऊँगा. I'll come to your office. What is it? He said, Oh, you'll come. I said, Of course I'll come. What do you mean? That's I just because you're a nice idea. person. That doesn't I, mean you're not the most powerful person okay. in all of India. Yeah. No you could say Corbin Miles is the star of my next film, and it's going to happen. That's the challenge I have. We're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this. 
to not to pretend you're busy when you're not. This is so old school. Yes, old school. It's like today is like be available. Yeah, say you're free. If you are you free on the twenty third? Oh, I'll have to check with my say. management. Why? Bullshit. You know, yeah. free, say you're free, na? You want to accept that award? Say you're able to show up. Reason. And be honest and so funny. To Wait, to he wants to be the kind of I director as an Anurag. That level of respect. Mm -hmm. most, I love winning those awards. Even today morning, somebody called me with some power brand award. I said, "Mil raha." <laughs> and you didn't let Ryan be your answer. I'm not giving anyone an <laughs> I like to receive. I like all that. But I don't believe all of that. I don't like to believe it. I like to do my own shit. Which is that's fine. That doesn't mean that's fine. Baba, since now you're Shadi Shuddha. No, <laughs> I want to know how has your waking up routine changed, been compromised or evolved? Because last I remember during Gunde, I used to wake you up. <laughs> And you used to tell me that your sister actually bribes you with a certain uh, chocolate to wake you up and get out there and go to work. So now, how does Boo Boo bribe you and uh, keep it PG? Keep <laughs> <laughs> it PG. I beg you. Thanks PG. for the thanks for the heads up, AK. Um, how does Boo Boo pick just, you up? In, in, just in case you haven't figured it out, that is. Arjun Kapoor, um, my Baba, uh, what a masculine voice. He really went for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is true. I have, uh, I'm a nocturnal creature. Um, I'm so like wound up in the day <laughs> that I take a long time to unwind at night. That's my wife. And as such, I sleep very late. Yep. And then I have issues waking up. Yep. Um, but now, that I am in Grihasti, hmm. uh, things have gotten much better. Now I reach places on time. My first appointment of the day is more or less on time. And this is an early riser. Yeah, it's not bad as it used to be. Now she has this background of being uh, a sports person, and uh, the core of uh, discipline values are attached with things like discipline and stuff like that. So she's very proper about her eating habits, about her sleeping habits. She makes sure she's calling me, telling me, chalo, ho gaya time, now come home, go to sleep. She puts me to bed um, on time. I wake up on time. So I'm getting into that very healthy routine thanks to her. All her positive um, influences are really doing me well. Good. Um, that's and, great. I meant yeah. to complete each other. That's yeah. a wonderful thing. And I was, I was prepared for it. I was like, this is going to be good for me. Because I used to be a bit of an ayash, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, not sleep, sleep late, uh, you know, all, all over the park. Now I'm like, I'm doing, I'm doing good. Good boy, yeah, waking up early. Good boy. You were a good boy. Waking. You were on early to bed, early, early to boy. rise. You, you've always been this potential, um, you know, quintessential husband, <laughs> you know, like who would play this part to perfection as well. Because I think you were born to give love and, you know, and that happens when you receive, I think 10% you'll give the other 90. So I think that's the kind of person you are. And uh, you're like this, like Zoya Akhtar describes you as like this glorious teddy bear who just has love to offer and give and he'll give in abundance. And uh, you won't know when to stop that love. That channel of love will just continue. Kanan. <laughs> That's true. But yeah, I must tell you that I'm very happy that this is happening to me. I know it will help me in my profession. You yeah. know, it uh, that little bit of discipline that I was lacking mm -hmm. has now uh, been... Now Having said that, I'm nocturnal myself. So the film we're going to do, can we do a later shift every day? Make it all night shifts. You are the boss. You can do anything. You He's can the most powerful man in Bollywood. We're doing a two, two, two. We have declared it. Two, 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 two. It's the <laughs> best, best shift, best shift of ebbs, ebbs. ebbs. I can't wait to, be get, to get onto set with you. And this is to you, to everything you do, to everything you stand for, and everything you will continue to do for yourself. And you, Mr. Multifaceted, panoramic, kaleidoscopic... <laughs> Genius, talent, once and in a lifetime, renaissance man. Renaissance man. Okay. <laughs> and you do look like some kind of a renaissance man yourself. Uh, but anyway. Look at those shoes. Listen, I like big shoes. <laughs> okay, now we're getting daddy. to Rebra. We've ended. Toodles. We toodles. Okay, we have end tape to end, end tape. this. Oh, we have an end tape? Yeah, we have an end tape, which I'm going to pop in. Pop it like it's hot. Karan and Ranveer, it's been a pleasure listening to you. 
Ranveer, you once said that it's a great honor to be a Karan Johar hero because his panoramic, kaleidoscopic, multifaceted talent is one of a kind. We think that's true for both of you. We look forward to seeing the magic you create together in Takht. Thank you for being such great guests. Takht? What is Takht? <clears throat> What are, what, are they, what are they referring to? Dacht. I don't know. And what was the thing that he said that he was the most proud of? I, I missed that. Yeah, I missed that too. Um, However, this was four years ago, so maybe his perspective has changed, but I'm going to give you the definition of power and then reiterate something Corbin said. One of the definitions of power is the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others or the course of events. Now, here, here's the specification there. You don't have to to choose to be an asshole about right. your power. Right. You don't have to be like, choose to act on your power. It does not mean you don't have power. Just like the people that, that are white in America and refuse to believe that they have white privilege because they grew up poor, because they're not a racist, because blah, 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 blah. They assume they don't have white privilege because they don't, they're not a bad person. They're not wealthy. They're not, they've had hardships in their life. So they assume that they're not a privileged person. Yeah. It's, it's if, like the exact if, same thing. If like, our friend Vicky in Mumbai called us up and said, hey, Rick, Corbin, I have this great idea for a film that I want you guys to star in. If you called us and said, hey, Rick, Corbin, I have this really great idea for a film I want you guys to star in. Who do you think is more powerful? Yeah. It's it. I love that he does it. Obviously, he doesn't want to fixate on that. No. To him, power would be being able to make the film I want to make that people would respect as an artist. Yes. But that's not what the question was about. All these things can be true. Absolutely. Like, <laughs> But it's undeniable his level of power is... Like, if you put somebody like an Anyurag, who I think he would say he's, he has a lot of power because a lot of people love his artistry. and he's Right. Like, or Vishal. And he has influence, and he yeah. uses that influence. And both of those people are powerful. Absolutely. No, no question. But there's a step above when you're at one... Just one, the money you have, the production house that you the own, relationships the relationships you've had for you decades, have, the amount of stardom you have. Just you could literally say, like, I we talked to Anurag, and he said, if you is there, if you want to get something made, go talk to Garon. Yeah, one he was talking about it in a nice way, in, in, in nice, a great way. He like, loves. He's, he a, says he's such a nice Karin person. And he wants to help everybody, right? And I have no doubt, and that's why I think he's denying it because he's like, that sounds like a mean word to me. No, I'm not mean, and I don't right. think he is mean at there's all. No, there's nothing mean about being a powerful person. You can't. Powerful people can be mean. That yeah, is, those do not coincide there. But the, <laughs> you can't deny no your power. Uh, just, I mean, just, 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 he could wake up one day and decide he's going to shut his company down. Mm -hmm. How many people lose their jobs because of mm -hmm. that? That's a level of influence. And, and power. I think Renvier, before Karen cut him off, yeah. was, <laughs> he was like trying to uh, explain him. It's like, I get what you're saying. I understand what you're saying, but that's not the point. But yeah. you could literally launch anybody you want. Yeah. And no one, you don't have a higher up to tell no. you <laughs> whether it's okay to do. <laughs> if you wake up one day and want to make a movie, you can make a movie. Anyway, I mean, you could argue um, like some other people in maybe other industries uh, could have more power. You could like a, a Raja Muli, or you could say like, but it, especially in Hindi cinema, no, there is nobody more powerful. And, and I, 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 we've said this before. We, He's so articulate. He's so intelligent. He knows the industry inside and out. And I, I do look forward to him making choices that are more in sync with that desire to be the kind of director he wants people to see him as. He's said it himself. It's hard for him to take off the Bollywood producer make money hat. Yeah. And I don't think he should. No. Um, he can do both. I think it's just also cool to – because obviously – People don't put him in the conversation with no. Anurag's, Vishal's, no. the, the people Zoya's. that make artistic films like that. Yeah. Uh, because he's made, for lack of a better word, bubblegum films. But right. they're also, they're wonderful. those are also the more loved films. Yeah, they're wonderful. Tell me somebody doesn't. <laughs> so you have a film like Header, which we consider a cinematic masterpiece. Right. And tell people, which do you love more, Header or DDLJ? But that for him is, I want to have the Vishal Bardwash respect. That to me is the power. And I understand that. 
I understand. I get it, but yeah. also, uh, but his film with Alia and Ranveer, I'm, I'm Ranveer. I'm very much looking forward to it this year. I think it comes out in July or something like that. They pushed it. But also, I'm expecting Karen Johar. Yeah. I'm not expecting Vishal. No. <laughs> I think that would be a big mistake. I think it would be great to see that. I would love that. And oh, yeah. I think it would give him great satisfaction. And then I also would love to have those same questions posed now four more years later on and with experience and with life, how many new challenges maybe. It's no question that Runveer loves stardom. What they should. Every aspect they of should it. They should do a, a variety interview with a Bollywood like a, a Renvier or a different artist like they do with um, right. Billie Eilish. I don't yeah. know if you've seen those. I, I know Ever of since it. she was like 16, she's gone to Variety and it's like five or six years now in a yeah. row. Yeah. And so like she says how old she is, how many Instagram followers she has, mm. how many like if she, awards she has and such like she sees it and she right. watches it back. Right. To see the difference. Where she was. Uh, it's actually really intriguing. Uh, I really enjoy those. But yeah, another fantastic one. Always enjoy these fun. things, especially listen to these two men talk yeah. um, as well. So let us know what other videos of theirs we can react to and which we are next Ranveer and Karen Johar films that we should watch. Let us know down below. Josh!